Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. This video is my trip report for the weekend of 429 and 430. I went down to Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California, aka GMARS, to collect some data from the Pelican Nebula, even though it did not become available until 2 in the morning. I thought it was worth my effort to go down, collect data using my ASI 533MC Pro one shot color camera and my Optolong L Extreme dual band filter. I wanted to collect that data now so I could work with it in PixInsight so I can understand. The correct workflow for processing data because the way I looked at it is I have a one-shot color camera with the color filter array the micro lenses in front of the pixels and now I'm dropping in a narrow band dual band filter so how do I process that data so that really is the main reason I went on this trip. It was also the 65th anniversary of the Riverside Astronomical Society and the 20 year anniversary of their ownership of um, GMARS. So there was a small celebration. I'm glad uh, I went down there. So here was my setup. There were a lot of visual astronomers as well as astronomical imagers. Here's a light frame from the Pelican Nebula. I also had some time, you know, the Pelican Nebula did not come around until 2 o'clock in the morning, so I just decided to collect some more data from uh, the Pinwheel Galaxy. This enabled me to monitor the performance of my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Very pleased with its performance. The highlight of the trip was meeting an imager who was two pads over from me that had a Celestron 8 inch Edge HD. And I've mentioned that I'm putting together a list of possible candidates for my next telescope. Will it be a refractor? Will it be a reflector? I'm still acquiring data. Haven't made up my mind yet. But it was great talking to the owner of this setup. He stepped me through the setup. He was candid with me around what challenges he has with this setup. And uh, very helpful information. He's chasing a little bit of tilt, but it's not so much that he can't live with, uh, you know, that he, he, he can live with it. And uh, on some objects, he's able to crop that uh, tilt out. So very good, uh, very good uh, experience talking with this uh, owner. And in particular, what caught my attention was this uh, microcomputer in I think a couple of my other videos I may have mentioned I want to downsize my compute devices this year. I'm using a big gaming laptop for data collection. It draws a lot of power. So I went ahead and I purchased the um, B-Link um, micro computer or mini computer. Here it is out of the box. Here's essentially what comes in the box. And then if we take a look, here are the specifications. I got the one with 16 uh, GB of RAM because using the one-shot color camera, uh, there's an option within Nina to debayer the lights so you see the color, uh, the, the light frame and color. So I went with the higher amount of uh, memory, and it's got 512 GB of SSD uh, storage capacity. 
I've got everything set up on it right now. I haven't attached it yet to my mount and uh, telescope and autofocuser. I will do that uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm very, uh, I'm very happy I made the decision to go in, uh, in this direction. I got uh, weaned off my QHY Pole Master. I loved the Pole Master as a beginner. It really helped me get a good polar alignment. It made it easy for me to accomplish. But with my new mount, the EQ6R Pro, I've been working without it. Now, I did bring it with me, the QHY Pole Master just in case I ran into any problems, but I, I'm, I'm getting the hang of it now. And when I go to a dark site, I'm able to set up one time and leave that set up in place for multiple nights. So <clears throat> first night, it takes me a little bit of time, but on six, uh, subsequent nights or follow on nights, it's, it's a very quick uh, check. And here's, uh, here's the next night. I mean, you know, I'm talking like two minutes and, and I was basically, um, good to go. So this is the uh, three-point polar alignment plug-in in, in uh, NINA, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. And um, I think now I'm ready to sell my QHY Pole Master. Uh, I may just hang on to it for sentimental reasons, but um, I'm really comfortable now with a different way of achieving polar alignment. And I still want to uh, try Sharp Cap's uh, polar alignment tool as well, just for my gain some additional knowledge. I've been working this year on trying to understand how to set the uh, correct exposure while imaging. Again, uh, having watched uh, Dr. Robin Glover uh, videos uh, last year, I decided to make that my mission this year was to try to understand how do I get to the optimal exposure. I've been using the optimal exposure calculator, which is a plug-in in Nina. And what I'm showing here is, and first let me just set the baseline when I'm imaging at home and I ran this uh, exposure calculator and I'm in a Bortle 7.8 here, it told me the recommended exposure was 15.36 seconds. What you see here, this 294 point whatever uh, seconds was when I ran the calculator about 20 minutes before astronomical dark. And you can see right away, 294 uh, seconds is a big difference from uh, 15 seconds. And then I ran it again after astronomical dark before I started imaging, and it said the recommended exposure time was 368 seconds. Uh, so what I'm learning is I'm, I'm, you know, clearly what I already understood is dark skies are better. And what I'm learning is maybe just how much better uh, they may be. Uh, GMARS is a Bortle 3.4. At least from the perspective of this tool, I also want to try SharpCap's Smart Histogram, which can help you set exposure as I understand it. So I'm still collecting more data. I'm going to be imaging under Bortle 1 skies if everything goes well at the end of June. And so then I'll collect some additional uh, data points. But I've as a beginner, I thought, okay, the goal was to take the longest possible exposure. But after I saw Dr. Robin Glover's videos, it got me to think that maybe my approach was flawed and I need a more methodical uh, science-based approach. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm still learning, but this is the year for me to sort it out to where I can set an exposure time uh, that I'm comfortable with. You know, what are my preferences when it comes to setting an exposure time and how much may I be leaving on the table or not leaving on the table for whatever time I uh, I basically select. This I found interesting. Uh, I did update PhD2 and this was the first time I used it and now I'm seeing all these green circles on a display. You know, is it doing multi-star guiding? I I'm not quite sure. I don't know really what this screen is telling me. All I know is after I did the calibration and I started guiding, my guiding metrics looked good, uh, very acceptable to me. And uh, I need to dig into this a little bit more to understand what I'm seeing here and why I'm seeing it. 
And then uh, finally, you know, just for fun, I like to, uh, I'm not comfortable yet sleeping through a Meridian flip, so while it's doing the flip, I just take out my uh, Pixel and uh, I just take some, uh, some video of, of the flip and uh, it also lets me look back and say, okay, I've really managed my cables well and uh, I'm not getting any snags or, or those type of things. All right, so let's just briefly go. I'm going to probably do a separate uh, video on this. What you see here on the screen is 4.5 hours of data collected with the 533 MC Pro and the uh, Optolong L-Extreme filter. This is uh, the integrated image after it's been debayered, uh, registered. Oh, no, this is not it. Correction. Um, okay, let me get back to um, my image. I will use this one. So this is the um, data, uh, you know, calibrated, registered, debayered, rotated, and uh, dynamic background extraction run on it. So this is the integrated image. I could take this, I could enhance it, and I could just call it a day if I like uh, the resulting image. But really, I think what I need to do is since I've got narrow band data here, I basically have to separate the RGB channels and see what signal is there. And then I need to combine them in some ratio to produce an HOO palette. And so if we take this integrated image and we use channel extraction to separate the channels, we can clearly see that the most signal uh, is in the red channel, which I think appropriately that should be because of the uh, HA. And then if we look at the green, uh, that's the amount of signal we have there. And then we see the blue, and that's the, the least amount of signal. So what I do then is, once I have the channels extracted, what I'm uh, working with now to understand uh, using uh, pixel math, I can um, I can combine these uh, different channels and different ratios. So here I'm for red. I'm using the uh, the red, which has the strongest uh, channel. For green, I'm using a mixture of the red, green, and blue channels. And then for blue, I'm using the green channel. So um, this is the mix, and when I start to mix it, I get variations. So if we take a look here, here's one variation of, of a certain ratio of, of the three channels, and then here's another variation, and then yet here's another variation. So it's kind of like a recipe of how I am have the ability to blend the R, the G, and the B to create a HOO uh, color palette. And I guess I could also alter it to do an SHO color palette. So <clears throat> this is where I'm at. I haven't uh, got to the final mix yet. And then once I have what I think is the right blending of those channels to represent a narrow band image, uh, then I will carry it through the remainder of the workflow uh, and I'll enhance and I'll um, you know do follow-on operations so uh, but it was a very good trip I'm glad I went down to collect the data uh, it got me started on figuring out the right workflow in Pix Insight clearly um, got a lot of information on the uh, on this uh, type of telescope as an option so it was just a really good trip, um, and uh, yeah, I'll probably do an update video on where I'm at with what's on my list as far as my next telescope. I had taken the 8-inch uh, Edge HD off my list, but after the experience of doing the face-to-face -face with the owner, <clears throat> it's back on. 
Uh, also a couple of William Optics, uh, um, FLT-91 and maybe the FLT-120. So um, it's going to take me several more months before I come to any kind of, uh, any kind of conclusion. All right, well, I think that's about it. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate you taking time to drop into the channel. Your comments and questions are always helpful. Other than that, uh, clear skies. I think the next time I'm really going to image is going to be more towards the end of June. Um, I'm about ready to head out to a fly fishing trip. And really right now, you know, it's going to be June before I have a greater number of hours across the uh, night to uh, image like the Pelican again, North American Nebula, and the veil starts to come into view and, you know, where I could be productive the whole night long. So that's why I'm probably going to uh, wait till June to be uh, my, next, uh, my next outing. But I'll do a trip report. And you'll probably see a couple of uh, videos, one on what I did in PixInsight to get to the final image for the Pelican Nebula. And then maybe I'll do a little bit more about the, uh, the B-Link computer and where I'm at with that. So, okay, again, clear skies. Thanks for dropping in. Till next time.